Hey, what's up, fellas? Welcome back to some more SBC Gaming News. And today we have a lot of news to cover, especially about the Miu A30 and the Ambernic RG28XX. And surprisingly, one big news item for the Miu Mini Plus, at least it's big to me. As always, I'll have everything timestamped below so you can skip around to whatever interests you. I'll also link everything so you can verify the sources yourself. But yeah, for today's news, I re-recorded this segment actually. Uh, I wanted to shuffle around some news items, so some things I covered in the original video, I'm going to push back to the next one. And some things that were just recent news items I put into this one, because it just kind of feels more cohesive that way. Okay, why don't we start with this post from Reverb underscore 7 in the SPC Gaming subreddit. This mad lad put a smartwatch on a controller. And yeah, he, <laughs> he's playing Aria, Aria of Sorrow on it, which I'm playing as well. Yeah, I don't know, man. My eyesight's like okay, but it's definitely getting a little worse, and I don't know if I can handle a screen that small. <laughs> I do like this post from user Enui Weekend. Screen is a little oversized. Can you shrink it down a little bit? Yeah, definitely, you know. <laughs> this one from Mr. Saucy Alfredo. The way that poor joystick is just shoved off center like that. Yeah, that, that joystick right there. <laughs> but it surprises me how you can game on a smartwatch. Technology is amazing. We'll change the formatting a little bit, but we're still going to jump into new consoles right away. And we have the R35 Plus, and this was posted by Diabetic Dinosaur 666 in the SBC Gaming subreddit. And yeah, I don't know if it's Game Console or Game Console E. I don't know if SC Deer and Game Console are the same companies. They might be. Who who can tell? But yeah, they have a new console out, and it's already on AliExpress. I don't know if these stores are trustworthy, but yeah, it's. Available from roughly $30 to about $40. Now, the thing that may cause people to buy something else is that there's the R36S. And that's already been well established in terms of custom operating system and what to expect from it. And people already have a lot of experience with that console. And this one seems to be very similar in terms of design and specs. So not entirely sure if there's a reason to buy this over the R36S. And uh, yeah, but yeah, there's not a lot of info about this console out. But the good thing is it's relatively cheap and it might be an option for people who want to get a cheap handheld. People like the 36, you know, like it's, it's not a bad console. Quality control is a little bit iffy on, on those devices as well. It, you know, it's a crapshoot when you buy something from AliExpress. And now moving on, we have the RGB 20 SX. So this was the console from Pal Kitty that had to one to one aspect ratio screen and is a vertical form factor. And this was posted by Solid Fail on the Pal Kitty subreddit. Feels like a commercial, but anyways, they're saying that the pre orders are out and that you can use a coupon code RGB 20 SX good to receive a discount of $20. And if you check the site out, we can see that the list price is $90 and then the sale price is around 70. Now I'm not sure if the coupon code still works, but yeah, $70 for that isn't too bad. I estimated that it would cost roughly the same as the RGB 30 and a 30 you can grab for about roughly $70 as well on sale. So yeah, that looks like, you know, a nice screen, but I'm not sure if there's a reason to buy this over the 30 because the horizontal form factor seems to be much more comfortable. So I'm not entirely sure if there's a reason for this console to exist other than you specifically want a vertical form factor, in which case you can buy this one. All right, now we're moving on to the GKD Pixel and this console came out a while back. It's another micro handheld, so it's a little bit bigger than the RG Nano. It's a little bit smaller than a Miu Mini, so it's about in the middle. And it has an all-metal case. The only downside was that the operating system or the custom firmware scene was a little bit underdeveloped. As far as I know, the one that works the best on that device is MinUI. But anyways, we might have potential new colorways coming out. And this was posted by Intrepid Mobile on the SBC Gaming subreddit. We take a look at a post down here. So Shigaruri linked 
Game Boy Jintaro's Twitter post. And they're, they're going to have a transparent color as well as some new colors here. And actually, they all look pretty good. I'm very partial to these two colors. I don't know why, but I like the colors that are not used often and kind of look a little jarring sometimes. Normally, I'm like all plain, you know, all black, all white, but yeah, these look pretty good. The only downside is that this handle is still very expensive. It's roughly 70 ish dollars. And for what you're getting, it seems too pricey. Like 70 bucks is a little too high for that. But yeah, if you want a new colorways, there you go. Moving on, we, we're going to go deep into the 830 now. So we have a lot of information that's come out. The first post is by CB990. It's linking Stuart Foo's 830 dedicated page. It has so much information there if you want to check it out. And Stuart Foo, I believe, ported Drastic to the Miu Mini Plus. He's also working on porting N64 to the Miu Mini. So look forward to that. I'm not quite sure how well it's going to run. But there's a GitHub page where Stuart Fu is actively updating the N64 emulator. So we'll probably see that in the near future as well. All right, so if we take a look at the post here, we'll go over the specs first. So it has a quad core 1.5 gigahertz processor versus the 1.2 gigahertz processor, only two cores on the Mi Mini Plus. It has a GPU and the Mi Mini Plus doesn't have any GPU. And we see 512 megabytes of RAM. And on the original, we had 128. So significantly more power for the hardware. But, you know, like the reason why I don't like going over specs too much is that the theoretical performance doesn't mean anything compared to actual performance. So what I mean by that is if the operating system or the emulators can't take advantage of the hardware and you get, you know, really bad performance, it doesn't matter if it has more powerful hardware. At the end of the day, what I care about is performance of games. But anyways, uh, I saw some videos of games running. It seems to be able to run Dreamcast, but it was not the best performance. It was it was skipping frames and the audio was stuttering. But yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. Also, keep in mind the battery life here for later when compare it to the RG twenty eight XX. That's a twenty six hundred milliamp hour battery. Another thing to keep in mind here, we only have one USB C port right here in terms of I O and that will be used for multiple things. It's not like the Miu Mini Plus where the Miu Mini Plus can only take power. You can't connect devices to the port because it only has power. This one, you can connect multiple things and we'll go over that right now. Okay, so this video is from YouTuber Tuber Viejuner. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it, but all of these Spanish speaking retro handheld channels have released early copies of the A30. And so they have the early reviews out if you want to check them out. And one thing to note here is that there is a USB-C to audio jack dongle. So we know just from that alone that the USB-C port is capable of transferring data. And we can see that later here as well if you skip to 1047. You can see there's a USB storage mode. I'm not sure if that's referring to both the onboard storage and the SD card, or just the onboard storage or just the SD card, but that's still huge if it can transfer data back and forth from the device without having to take the micro SD card. Uh, that'd be super nice. But yeah, now that we know we have more functionality over the USB C port, that's pretty cool. It can probably have more options in terms of, you know, custom apps to transfer data and such. All right, so surprisingly though, the A30 has been delayed again. So this was posted by Nathaniel in the Miu Mini subreddit and they contact customer support and they're like, it's delayed. So if we refer back to the original post from was it Go Gamer Geek or whatever it was, uh, they were saying that the product will come out this week. So <laughs> they're saying that the pocket the Miu Mini Flip would come out earlier than the A30. And I was like, that's, there's no way, bro. There's no way. And then the A30 was supposed to come out this week. So around the 14th to the, you know, the 20th. And it's not out yet. So I don't know when it's coming out. Maybe the end of the month. We'll see, though. 
Moving on to the RG28XX. Man, I think Ambernick has a better product and I'm going to go into why later. But look at all the colorways here. I like all the colors here. Again, I'm partial to the orange one. I like all of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, but we have a comment from Sido Stockman. I'm not going to do this, but I want to get three of those new 28XXs and swap the shells on them. So one is all white, transparent black with purple buttons and orange with black buttons. Man, that will look really good. I, you know, if they sell replacement shells for cheap, I think that'd be pretty awesome. We also have another comment from Ilkler Yoldas. Can you try the different custom firmwares for the M17 and do a comparison? Short thing, dude. Uh, I'll include a little bit of an update at the end of this video for MinUI. So Ruka, I didn't try yet, but that's no longer being developed actively. And then for Bodicera, I feel like it's no longer being worked on because they're just working on the H version. And it, I don't know if you can install it on a third revision of the M17. The readme said the installer script only works for the first re revision of the M17. So we'll see. But at least I can cover main UI and the stock operating system. So this is one of the reasons why I remade the video. There's just too much news coming out. And this one is pretty cool. It's the official RG28XX unboxing. This was posted by CV990 in the SBC Gaming subreddit from Ambernick's official YouTube channel. We, we can take a look here. So a couple takeaways. Uh, they have an HDMI port on the top and they have an audio jack. So it's already better than the Mio A30 in my opinion in terms of functionality. You can just take a look here. So I think in terms of comfort and usability, it's better. The A30 just looks better. I think it looks more sharper and cleaner, but this just looks more usable. They also have a 3100 milliamp hour battery, meaning it'll last longer than the A30, roughly speaking. We don't know because the operating system makes a big difference, but theoretically speaking, this should last longer. So if we take a look here, OTG and power here, we have the HDMI right here. And on the bottom, we're going to have an audio jack. It's, it's already better in my eyes. It depends on your preference, but for me, uh, this seems to be the better pick. Now we'll, we'll take a look after the pricing comes out. But yeah, right there. And another thing to consider is this is the same chipset as the H, the Plus, and the 2000 version of the RG35XX. And, you know, Botocera is being developed for it heavily. So once it comes out, theoretically speaking, it should be able to be used on this device right away. Now, that's not how things pan out. Usually there's going to be bugs and hardware specific related issues they have to fix. But in terms of custom operating systems, uh, this one is going to be a little bit further ahead. Whereas for the A30 and the Miu Mini Flip, whenever it comes out, uh, we're not sure if, you know, Onion OS can be easily installed on a device because it's different hardware than the Miu Mini and the Miu Mini Plus. So the Onion team is probably going to have to do a lot more work to get it working. So in terms of usability, this is probably going to be ahead of the A30 on release. All right, we're going to move straight into updates. And I think this is a pretty big news item, at least to me. And that's another reason why I had to kind of reformat this video and re-record it. We have the Miu Mini Plus getting RTC. This was verified by a few users. I'm going to go over how to check. This was posted by D Mysai in the Miu Mini subreddit. And there's apparently another revision of the Miu Mini Plus, which has RTC. So if you watch my series, there's a YouTuber named Takia Gecko that this guy mentions where they did a mod to add RTC functionality because the CPU or the chipset has RTC, but the pin is not constantly powered. It's only powered when it's on. So then the solution was to cut the trace and then solder a wire to a trace that is always on. And then you have RTC. Now, <laughs> I don't think that's doable for most people, myself included. It's a very small solder. It's micro soldering. And it's not the easiest thing to do. And cutting the trace, you might wreck something. So the difference though is if you check the back here, uh, you can see that my Mi Mini Plus is angled. That little silver thing right there. 
So if you look at the newer revisions, it's rectangular. If you have the newer one, chances are very high that you have RTC enabled. So the newer re revisions must have have a different PCB where the trace to the RTC pin is always on. And to enable it, you just type, you just make one simple file and put it in the config folder. Let me take a look here. So yeah, you make a file called no dot no time restore and then put it in the config folder in the dot temp update folder on your SD card. And what that does is when Onion OS boots, it will not restore the time, which is the default behavior. And it will just rely on the RTC. So what you do is you make the file, put it on the micro SD card in the correct folder, and then you set the time and you can turn it off, wait a little bit, turn it on, and it should verify if you have RTC. So again, this only works for the newer revisions. So they bought it, uh, I guess sort of semi-recently in January 13th. How to check? On the back right here. So check if you have a rectangular tab. If you have the angle one like mine, you don't have RTC on the chip. You have to mod it yourself by micro soldering. And I don't want to do that. Cutting the trace, that's too much of a bother. But yeah, that's pretty neat. So yeah, check if you have this. Now let's say you want RTC. The best way to kind of emulate it on these older devices is to have Wi-Fi and then have the Wi-Fi time sync. And that should work in terms of syncing the clock and then acting like it has RTC. So that's the best way to do it for these older ones. Newer ones, you know, check if you bought one recently, check if you have that rectangular angle on the back. And then you can do that simple file and have RTC in your handheld. Okay, moving on, we have another MiU Mini slash plus related news item. So Koriki 1.4.1 was released. And the reason why this is big news is that it has the updated RetroArch core. It is 1.18.0. And the biggest thing for me of note is that it has the new GPSP core, which has the Game Boy Advance Wi-Fi link adapter. So that will let you play Pokemon and transfer Pokemon for Game Boy Advance games. For Onion OS, currently right now, it's only for the Game Boy Color games. And if you wanted wireless, you know, Pokemon transferring, whatever, you're going to have to try Kariki for now. You can kind of compile the updated RetroArch core yourself and then put it on your handheld if you want. I haven't done that, so I can't walk you through that, but it shouldn't be too hard, but yeah. So the reason why we have this is thanks to developer David Gillenfandos. Again, I hope I pronounced the name correctly. I mentioned this a while back, but this guy is, uh, I think is a mad lad. He wrote the Game Boy Advance wireless adapter for GPSP and that should be coming out. And we have video confirmation. So this was posted by Glum Round 4209 and this is a YouTube video from a Korean channel is Choguni. That's, that's how you read that. And yeah, there's a video here showing that you can use the Wi-Fi. Yeah. My, my Korean is very rudimentary, but I was able to read the comments here. It's like saying, what is this? <laughs> it's not a Game Boy Advance. Anyways, so let's say you're using the Onion OS and the MiU Mini and the MiU Mini Plus. You don't have to worry. It'll come in the next version. So if you look at their GitHub and look at what's coming for version 4.4, they're going to update the RetroArch core to 1.18. So that would have the updated GPSP core with the wireless stuff built in. And there are some other questions too related for retro achievements. I remember someone asking, how do you have the image on there? And apparently the reason why there's no images is because the devs were saying that it might be a little bit too taxing for the hardware to include that, but they may include sound. So you see this posted by Schmerzim. They may improve how Retro Achievements integrates with Onion OS. So it might have more sound. They might try to put images in there, but we'll see. Yeah, Cloud Saves as well. So if you want to see the features that are coming in the next version of Onion OS, they're working on a lot. 
There's also one that was interesting to me. This was something I wanted to code myself, but I was like, I can't do it. It was updating the time with Wi-Fi at boot and then turning the Wi-Fi off because that was a feature I wanted because I don't use Wi-Fi and it drains the battery faster, but just turning it on and boot would be nice to sync the time for the older ones that don't have RTC now. So yeah, they're adding that as well. So yeah, looking forward to version 4.4, I think it has a lot of features that people want because I actually received comments about these features on some of my videos. You know, the wireless transfer for Game Boy Advance games, especially for Pokemon, uh, retro achievements, and then just my personal uh, want of having a way to sync the time at boot and then turn the Wi-Fi off automatically. All right, moving on to our next item. This is kind of a mix between buyer advice and just a rant because it, it's something that bothers me when I see it on the subreddits. But this was posted by a lost rent in the Miu Mini subreddit. It's a post about fixing the USB-C charging on the Miu Mini Plus. So if you have one, you know that sometimes USB-C charging works, sometimes it doesn't. And just to be safe, you use a USB-A to USB-C cable on one of the old power bricks or on your laptop or computer. And people are wondering why doesn't it work reliably with the newer USB-C bricks, you know, with power delivery, fast charging and all that. And here's the reason why. They cheaped out on designing the USB-C port. So it ha has a USB-C port, but it's not built to spec. And the funny thing is they have the CC1 and the CC2 pin shorted and it's sharing a common resistor. And the counter fix is to cut the trace and then solder a 5K ohm resistor on there. So we have some users who create this mod and this will let you use a USB-C charging cable on it. So this one looks a little bit iffy, <laughs> looks a little bit unsafe, but it works, you know, if it works, it works. So the reason why I brought this post up is because the common advice for these devices and not just the Miu Minis, but for other ones is that using a modern power brick with power delivery and quick charging and USB-C to USB-C, it might not work and it might actually damage the device. And every so often I see a lot of people saying that for those bricks that it's impossible to, to damage the device because it has a handshake protocol. And if it fails the handshake protocol, it will revert to a lower wattage or lower amperage, you know? And the thing is, uh, that's if it were built to spec, but these devices are not. So that is just factually incorrect because you're assuming that whoever made this, made this port and the charging circuit correctly, and they don't, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I was a fan of Giant Bomb back in the day. And, you know, I remember there was like a little segment there where I forgot how they got to it, but they're like, China don't care. And they were going to put it on a t-shirt, like a slogan. And yeah, China don't care when they design this stuff. Uh, they will cut corners. And so the advice of just use whatever charging brick you want, it'll work fine, is very bad advice because we don't know how these devices are designed. We need people who are actual engineers or knowledgeable about circuits to analyze it and then make sure that it's built to spec. And so these guys clearly know enough to figure out a way to make it more compliant with USB-C charging. I would be careful when using a modern charging brick with these devices. I don't think there's anything to lose by using a USB-A to USB-C cable and then using a basic phone brick, you know, the 1.5 amp ones. Okay, moving on, we have something related to the H. So if you're, if you have the H and I have one too, I got it for cheap on TikTok. I like this handheld a lot, but if you update it to Botticera on your handheld and you notice the battery life isn't what it used to be, that's because there's actually a bug where it'll drain the battery due to the user data car being formatted to FAT32 instead of EXT4. Now I'm not entirely sure why that happens, but if you format it to FAT32, it causes corruption and that corruption causes the battery drain even when the handle is turned off. Yeah, I'm not really sure why this happens because I feel like when you turn the power off, there should be no power period. 
but these devices aren't built like that. In fact, some of them won't even charge with a, without a working micro SD card in the proper slot, which again is strange to me. I would design it in such a way where it doesn't need that to charge. But yeah, that's how it is. And so this post was posted by Y209 in the Amber Nick subreddit. And then the post related to why it happens was posted by Uchiha Dante in the RG35XX Plus subreddit. So yeah, the fix for this is to format the user data card to EXT4 instead of FAT32. And the reason why they made it FAT32 was most people use Windows. And Windows can't really access EXT4 natively, at least as far as I know. And so changing it to FAT32 allows you to access it on most Windows computers, but that causes an issue. So yeah, I mean, you're going to have to learn how to use Linux or Linux utilities. Not the hardest thing, but yeah. Also another thing, I finally drained the battery on this. It took 9 hours and 30 minutes to first charge. That's a lot of battery life. I was playing Game Boy Advance, Castlevania, Aria Sar on this. And 9 hours is really nice. I, I like the battery life on this. Okay, now we're moving into... Apple allowing emulators on the App Store. So it's a little bit outdated, but the reason why I wait is sometimes there's more news coming out and more developments. And it's really good to wait about a week from when you first hear something to get all the updates. And then I like giving you the full story if possible. Now, Apple allows emulators. This was posted by, that is one heck of a name, E B X L B R V E K J B E O J H A R T B in the SBC Gaming subreddit. This was posted on Engadget originally. I think the author was Mariella Moon. This developed very quickly, so I follow Retro Game Core on YouTube. He posted a short about IGBA on the App Store, and then <laughs> it got removed. So. This was posted by Tuski in the SBC Gaming subreddit. And the official article was from Mac Rumors by Joe Rossingall. A lot of people covered it, so I'm just citing whatever they linked. And the reason they give for Apple removing it is because apparently it was a copycat version of an open source app where they pretended that it was their work and they were monetizing it heavily. Apparently, I don't know, because I don't have an Apple device and I can't verify this. But it seems a little weird because there's some comments here. And again, it's just people online saying stuff and I don't know if it's true or not, but they're saying that it's open source. So you can't really technically create a knockoff in a sense if you're following the license. Also, I didn't know if this was true or not, but Apparently, the GBA4 iOS license had a stipulation where they say if you plan to submit your app to the Apple App Store, you need written permission from the author, but that is not compliant with GPL v2, apparently. I think that's, that seems correct. Um, so you don't, that's not enforceable. But yeah, um, I don't know why they removed it, but I, there was like an N64 app that got removed as well. Uh, I saw people claiming that it was due to heavy tracking and ad, ad related stuff. I'm not entirely sure, but that's fine because we have the Delta emulator now, and it seems to be very popular. It has all of the older Nintendo systems, the NES, the Super Nintendo, the N64, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and Nintendo DS. So it has everything all in one. And people seem to be liking it. This was posted by Popular Highlight 16 in the SBC Gaming subreddit. So will we see further developments? I don't know. But this is pretty nice to have emulators on Apple devices now. So if you have an iPhone or a tablet and it's an old one and you don't really use it anymore, now it can be a retro gaming device. And I think it's really nice to turn old devices into gaming devices because it gives a new life. You can play your old games that you like. You can give it to a kid and don't, you know, you don't have to worry too much about it being broken or anything because usually those phones are a little bit more durable than, you know, like a Miu Mini where if you drop it, it just breaks the screen. Uh, but yeah. Okay. That's going to be it. Uh, before I end, I'm going to cover uh, the M17 custom firmware just a little bit. 
and then we'll call it quits. Let me know if you are okay with this format. It's not really that much different, but I didn't have any user creations. I'm going to include more of that in the next video. I kind of like grouping related news items together. So this is more related to the A30 and the Amber Nick handhelds. And next week, next week's news items are going to be focused more on the handheld PCs. I have a lot of news related to that. I like kind of grouping it together to form like kind of a loose narrative. We have to recap, I think the Ambernic RG28XX is going to end up as the better buy compared to the 830. In my opinion, I don't, I don't have the handhelds, but just by looking at it, the 28 has the audio port. It has HDMI out. You know, it just looks more comfortable to hold. There's no joystick. The audio grill seems to be better designed in that slanted downwards so your thumb can't completely muffle it. It's going to be very hard to do that. <laughs> Unless the slant is a little bit lower. Uh, or not as significant as I thought. It just looks a little bit more comfortable to hold too because it's more rounded and bulky. Whereas the A30 just looks better, but like it looks a little bit more uncomfortable. So I'm going to briefly update you guys on using MinUI on the M17. I haven't downloaded the DS emulator and the PSP emulator quite yet, but it is a lot better to use than the stock OS in terms of how much features you have access to. The immediate noticeable difference is when you press the volume minus or plus keys you go you go into the menu and you can just simply save your states here and for the stock os you kind of only have one save slot whereas here you have multiple and then here as you can notice this is not stretched full screen so on the stock operating system for some weird reason the Game Boy Advance emulator is stretched full screen and there's really no way to change the resolution from the operating system itself. As far as I know, maybe if you edit the config files. But yeah, you have more options here. We can take a look. And you can change the aspect ratio. You can change emulator here, emulator options. It's very minimalistic, but even it being minimalistic still has more features than the stock OS. So another thing here, so when you want to change the volume, you got to press select and then L or R. That's how you change the volume. And if you want to change the brightness, you press start and then press L or R. So I don't have an issue with that because I don't really change the volume. I e either leave it muted or I'm wearing earbuds because once again, this has a rear firing speaker. And it's very loud because it's facing away from you. And I don't like rear firing speakers at all. So I didn't, I didn't try out all of the emulators yet. So I want to try out DS on this because that's not available on stock. I want to see if the PSP emulator on MinUI, that performance will be better than stock. We'll see if there's any difference. I want to see if there's a difference in the battery life. And then that's pretty much it. But overall, like... I actually don't mind stock. I mean, most people will probably mind stock, but for me, I play games just fine on it. Uh, I moved from Sudoku to Aria of Sorrow on this. So I'm taking turns grinding for all the souls. That's going to take me a while, but I play until the battery life is dead on this. And then I update my little note file about my M17 usage. And then I switch to the H. And then once that's drained, I go back to the M17. And then I back up the save files because I'm using the stock micro SD card. Uh, this one is a SanDisk one that I got from a phone. And I believe this may be actually a counterfeit micro SD card. I haven't done thorough testing on it, but the paint on it doesn't really look legitimate if you take a macro shot on it. Yeah, it's going to be hard to tell just by looking at this. But overall, if you're just looking to play games, it's a solid handheld. I mean, there's a lot of flaws with this, but you know, again, once you're playing a game, you kind of forget all the flaws, except for the D-pad, you know. <laughs> I know I keep mentioning it, but this D-pad placement makes me sad. Okay, that's gonna be it. That was kind of a long episode. I, it's my second take on it. It is a little bit different than when, what I first recorded. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you have any comments, if you got any questions, if you want me to cover anything, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And 
trying to see if I forgot anything. My, <laughs> my mind's getting a little bit scatterbrained lately. I almost forgot. Thank you so much for dropping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. I genuinely appreciate it because I know there's people making way better content out there. And you chose to give me some of your time. So I appreciate that a lot. Okay, before I keep rambling, as always, hope you guys are staying safe and seeing out there. And catch you guys next time.